particle of mass, five kilograms, moves in a circle of radius four meters on a smooth horizontal surface. Okay, now let me just, before we read the rest of the question, that word smooth, smooth, what that indicates is there's no friction, no friction, which is why I can say, oh, it's going to be uniform circular motion, okay? There are other words that sort of um, are like that, which you'll see in the question, which is like, why is that? You'll see if there's, um, for example, um, something moving along. We actually looked at this question yesterday, I think. It's moving along a um, horizontal surface attached to a string, like so, and they might say something like, the string is light and inelastic, okay? Why do you think they say light? What's the significance of that? It mm, means you're not contributing any mass because it's light, okay? If I say it's inelastic, inelastic, what that means is it's always going to retain that same length, right? So therefore it has a constant radius, so that's why it's circular, okay? So those words aren't there for no reason, um, but for all intents and purposes, basically what they're trying to say is, hey, it's this, okay? Five kilograms, smooth horizontal surface, attached by a string to a point on the surface. What they want us to find is the tension in the string... T, uh, and you can say just tension. I mean, you could use temperature, That's I suppose. Why I thought you said equals 8,000, and I was like, what? <laughs> what could that be? It's like, um, okay, yeah, so the clue is Newton's, but anyway, that's okay. Um, what's the tension? By the way, I will point out, just like here, I tend to speak more in terms of forces. You don't have to call it tension, because maybe the force that's pulling into the middle isn't tension. It might be gravity, whatever, whatever. Okay? If I'm spinning at that, uh, revolutions per minute. And then secondly, and this, by the way, I'm, when we answer this question, I want to pull your mind back to what we did yesterday on the basketball courts. Okay, just, just think about it. What is the maximum number of revolutions per minute if the string will break when the, if the maximum tension is 8,000 newtons? Okay, so that's the question, that's the setup. Right? So, I, uh, I kind of held your hand over here. How would you like me to start this question just to work out <coughs> tension? What, what road should I get on? Okay, so I'm going to have to be talking about forces. I'm going to have to be talking about forces. If I come back to over here, right, forces over here, what I'm really trying to work, it, work out is the normal force. That's equivalent to tension in this context. To work out the normal force, I'm going to need one, two, three things. Mass, radius, and angular velocity. I already know mass and radius. And the angular velocity is here. Really, this question is just a question of conversion. right? This is revolutions per minute. I want, uh, where'd it go? Radians per second. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm just going to deal with, um, with the angular velocity first. Angular velocity, 180 uh, revolutions per minute. Okay. So that means every second, this is 60 seconds after all, how many revolutions am I doing? Three. I'm, I'm, this is 60 seconds, so I divide both of my units by 60. That gives me three revolutions per second. It's pretty fast. Um, I need this in radians now. How many radians is one revolution? Two pi. Two pi. So this is six pi radians per second. Yeah. Don't skimp on the units, as you can see. Units are everything in what I just did. Okay. All right. I just established that um, the force, the tension, is going to be dependent on these three things. So now I just need to substitute in. Okay. The normal force is going to be uh, negative 5 times 4 times omega squared. Yeah? So this is 6 pi squared. Yeah? What's this? This is 20. Seven. That's 36. That's negative 720 pi squared. Okay? Now, because they've said tension, right, um, that kind of takes care of the fact that which direction it's going in. So all, all I would do from this, which tells me more than what they're asking for, is um, just tell them the magnitude. The tension is 720 pi squared newtons. Very good, because it's a force. Okay? So far, so good. So what I had to do here was work out what the tension was based on all of these bits. So it was a substitution. Did you hear that? Or was it just me? Yeah. 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 Hello. Hi. Oh, okay, she should be in the library. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jitsu, can you help this trivia find the lizard she should be in the library? Oh, of course. Just because you know what she looks like. Oh, are you sure? Well, actually, it's a good one. It's just a lizard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, she's good. 
you can come back. Okay, now just have a look at how this question is phrased and what is it asking differently, okay? Before, we knew mass, radius, and eventually we worked out omega, okay? Here, we know, well, what do we know now? We still know mass, we still know radius, but then they provide for us this force and they're trying to, thank you, they're trying to work out, what are we trying to work out? The, the I'm trying to work out angular velocity. That's what I'm after, okay? So this is just like a shifting around problem. I'm still going to write down this, right? Uh, so this is part B. I'm still going to write this as my starting point, okay? But now I'm like, okay, I'm just filling in different things. This force is going to be, now it's 8,000 newtons, but this statement here includes the direction in there. So which way is it facing? It's, it's negative, right? Because it's facing towards the center. So I'm going to write negative 8,000. Uh, this has already got the unit taken off it. So Newton's is done. Um, I've got here, we already had, that was 5 times 4, right? And then omega squared, that's the unknown. Yeah, so far so good. That's 20. So therefore omega squared is... 400. So I'm going to take the square root, okay? Um, I'm just going to say this because angular velocity, whether you're going clockwise or anti-clockwise, is immaterial to this question, isn't it? It's just how fast can you go, okay? So I'm just going to say, let's just take the positive value. Wait, is clockwise positive and anti-clockwise? You can define it any way you like. The convention is that anti-clockwise would be positive because we're like, you know, well, radians. Yeah, we're, we're like this, right? So you start from here and you measure upwards like that. So it's anti-clockwise. Um, there's a real way in which the universe is anti-clockwise, like, you know, right hand rule, all that kind of thing. If you think about that. The reason why we call clockwise clockwise is because, does anyone know why? why? Why does the clock read in this direction? It's because the sun, is, the sun dies. So it's, it's connected to sundials, and it's also connected to the fact that we, we our script, the English script, is left to right. So it's like, well, if I start there, and, yeah. Um, so I don't know if Hebrew clocks go the other way, but anyway, whatever. Okay, now I've worked out Omega. Have I answered the question? No. No, why not? Because it has to be in revolution. Okay, this is in radians per second, right? Okay, so what am I going to need to do to this? To turn it into minutes... I'm going to have to do, like if this is 20 in a second, then I'm going to have to do, in 60 seconds, I do 60 of these, right? So what's that? Yeah, so that's what, 1,200? Yeah, that's 1,200 radians per minute. And then I need to convert this into revolutions, right? So I divide by 2 pi, very good. So um, this is going to be 1,200 on 2 pi revolutions per minute. And of course, you can cancel that to be 600 on pi, okay?